let's start off by actually thinking about how we might approach a problem. If we have 14 multiplied by 6, one thing you might like to think of is, is it 10 and something? And in fact, we can split 14 into 10 plus 4. And the reason we do that is because multiplying by 10 is something we can do quite readily. So we've now got 10 times 6 plus 4 times 6. So 10 times 6 gives us 60, and 4 times 6 gives us 24. So by remembering that 14 is 10 plus 4, we've got 10 groups of 6 and 4 groups of 6. So we've got two easier problems, and that makes 84. Now let's look at the same problem, but a slightly different way. Another thing you could do here is think of the factors of 14 to break that down. Now I know the times tables up to my 12 times tables, but once I get past 12, it's a bit trickier. So with 14, I'm going to think of the factors of 14. Well, what numbers can I multiply together to get 14? 1 and 14, or 2 and 7? So let's use the fact that 14 is the same as 2 multiplied by 7, and rewrite our problem using those three numbers we've got now. We've got 2 times 7 times 6. So we've got a new problem, but it's the same value. It's just written in a different format. And you know, we can actually multiply in any order. So you could write these in a different order, because what we're going to do is multiply 2 by 6 first. Why are we doing that? Remember, we know our 12 times tables, and 2 sixes are 12. Now you could write the problem out if you're a little bit unsure, and that means what we're doing is thinking of the different parts of the problem and just working them out in a different order. So 2 sixes are 12, and 12 sevens are 84, because I know my 12 times tables. So I'm now working out 12 times 7, and that is 84. But remember, I didn't know my 14 times tables. And I also knew my 7 times tables up to 12. So that's why 12 multiplied by 7 is much easier than 14 multiplied by 6. But they give me the same answer. Now, here's some more problems where we think of the factors. And I'll tell you why we do. I'm going to work out 16 multiplied by 25. Now I could break 16 into 10 plus 6, and that would be a really good way to solve the problem. So you might like to try that yourself, but I'm going to show you another technique. Now the number 25 is really useful, and it's a great number to remember, because we know that 4 multiplied by 25 equals 100. So what we're looking for here is, does the number that we're multiplying by 25 have 4 as one of its factors. And we're multiplying 16 by 25. So what are the factors of 16? And we're going to change 16 to show those factors. And 16 has 1 and 16, 2 and 8, or 4 multiplied by 4. Now 4 is the number we're looking for, so that's the choice we're going to make here. Because we've now got 4 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 25. The same thing, but the beauty of this is we've actually found 4 multiplied by 25, which gives us 100. And that's what we were looking for. And now we've got 4 groups of 100, which equals 400. So the answer to 16 multiplied by 25 is 400.